<clears throat> okay, let's see if this part works. Yep, okay, today's a good day. <laughs> All parts work, and um, when I got to my office at you know seven fifty, I thought, ah, today I'm on time. You know, I'm actually a little bit early. It's great. And then I went to the trunk to get my bag out. It's not in the trunk. I go like, oh, where did where did I put it? And I, I thought I put it into the men's bathroom, the little cubby thing, and forgot to take it home. So I went through all the labs, all the classrooms, and couldn't find it. And then I eventually drove home and, and then found it, you know, at home where I work. Um, so I drove back and so that took me about 40 minutes. It's not too bad, okay? I didn't have to get, get on the highway. I basically had to go from one end of Eastern to the other end of Eastern. That's about it. So it wasn't too bad. <clears throat> Another reason why I'm not teaching at uh, Sac City. That would have taken an hour easily at this time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're going to continue with the discussion of the Dijkstra's algorithm. Um, and what we'll do today is we are actually going to apply the algorithm just so that you can see, you know, how to trace the whole thing. So what we'll do is we're going to take a look at an example. Okay, I think this one is a good one. Um, and we have to decide on you know, what, what we want to use as our destinations. Obviously, if D is our destination, it's not going to be very interesting, right? <laughs> but we also want to make sure the algorithm does work when the destination is not reachable, that it's going to go like, eh, can't find any you know, shortest path at all, right? So that's actually what we'll be starting off with is, you know, what if D is our destination, okay? Our destination set only has one single thing, which is you know, the one thing that is not reachable. Okay, so with this one, I'm not gonna write anything down because otherwise the, the, the projector is going to be very, very cluttered. Um, instead, what we'll do is we're, we're just gonna follow the instructions on this side. Okay. So this is our graph, okay? We have you know, A, B, C, D, and E <coughs> as our vertices. We have our edges, okay? The, the edges are numbered, but these are not actual serial numbers. They are basically the distance of each edge. Each edge is directed, um, so it looks like an arrow. The tail is where we start, the head is where we end up with. Yep? Can we get the numbers for those, like, essentially using the distance function, the e maps dot r something? Yes. Yep, so d of, um, d of ba is 2. D of uh, C, B is four, and so on, yep. So that's uh, kind of what we also kind of talked about last time, um, is to look at D as a function like this. Um, except this is not you know, saying D of B, A is two, it is using the set notation. So I'm looking at the function as a set of two tuples, except the first item of the two tuple is, again, its own you know, two tuple, because it is representing an edge. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and figure out you know, what's going to happen when D, which is the only unreachable, or, yeah, which is one of the unreachable um, vertices, is our destination. Okay, so we go through the initialization just like usual. <clears throat> so in this case, you know, because D is the destination, so the set S is going to have only one single element, which is just the vertex D itself, okay? So it doesn't have anything else. Which also means, you know, in this particular initialization, um, everybody is going to have infinity except of uh, L of D, which is going to be a zero, okay? Um, then we get here, Q is our edge set, um, and that initially is the same as the set of destination, you know, destination vertices. So Q will start with a single element, which is D itself. Are we still doing okay so far? Okay, because I just want to make sure that the notation of the pseudocode algorithm is okay, that you guys understand what the right, the left arrow means. The left arrow simply means you know, assignment. We're updating the left-hand side of the arrow with whatever is on the right-hand side, okay? 
I do not use an equal symbol because, um, well, I guess you know I did use it right next on the next line here accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> because the equality symbol is uh, checking whether something, whether the left hand side is the same as the right hand side, which is not the intent of this particular operator. I want to change the left hand side so it becomes the right hand side. Okay. All right. So when so e, uh, e prime is initialized to the empty set, which means we do not have any edges in the solution uh, edges. So. At this point, you know, we get to the while statement. You know, Q is definitely not empty because it has one single element, which is D in it. Is that okay? So then what we do is we select an element out of Q such that the L value of whatever we, of whatever we select, which is vertex B, B is a variable, has the lowest cost, okay? It has the minimum length um, as the shortest path to the destination or one of the destination vertices. Um, okay, so how many vertices do we have in Q? One. We got one, okay, which is D, vertex D. L of D is zero. So when we consider every element in Q, is L of V less than or equal to the L of V of everybody, including itself? Yep, meets that requirement. Okay, let's pick D out of that uh, Q. So the next line is going to remove um, vertex D from Q. In other words, the subtraction here is really just saying, OK, the result of the subtraction is whatever is in Q that is not B. That's basically what it's saying. But since B is vertex D, that means you know, the end result is going to be the empty set. In other words, at this point, Q is going to be updated to be an empty set. Is that OK? So we are removing a vertex from the edge set so that we can explore you know, who gets into, who's you know, ending up with that particular vertex. And then we go through this loop here for each edge in um, this particular set. So we'll focus on this particular set here and go like, OK, what is that set? Because that particular set is not exactly E, because you know, this particular set are the edges that ends up with vertex B. Okay. So when you look at the graph on the left hand side, how many edges end up with D? In other words, you know, how many edges has the head B and D? None, zero, nothing, right? So this for loop is done, okay? Because we do not have any edges fitting that requirement. There's nothing to do after the for loop, so we get back to the beginning of the while. At this point, Q is in fact empty, and we're done, okay? So the algorithm does quote unquote work, even though the destination is not reachable because the solution set of E prime is an empty set, which basically means no one has a way to get to the destination. That's it. Is that okay? So that's kind of like a warm up. Um, so after the warm up, what we'll do is, you know, I need to figure out a way to kind of split the screen <coughs> into multiple sections so that we can kind of I think I got, you know, I think I know how to do this. So what we'll do is we're going to use um, Google Drive to make a spreadsheet. So we'll make a new spreadsheet. I can move it later on. Uh, get a blank one. And then we'll separate this tab into its own window. Press F11. Oh, okay, that just maximizes the whole thing. I was hoping that there's a way to remove the, the menu bar and all that stuff. I know the menu bar can be removed, so we just go to menu bar, menu bar and click it. But it still has you know this frame, which is kind of in the way. And also, this part you know, still has its own formula bar. I can get rid of that. Let's see. Can I get rid of all the other stuff? Any compact controls? Hmm? Compact controls near the bottom. Okay. Uh, cool. Nice. So that really works. Help, it really helps to make it possible to show both the algorithm, the graph, and also the trace at the same time, which is what I want to do right now. Okay, so we go to this module again. 
and we can make this one wider okay because you know we just I just need to show the graph itself so this is better because we don't have to wrap around the lines as much okay so I think this is kind of the best I can do given the, the real estate that I have on this particular screen or the, on the projector but I think we'll get it done we will get it done yeah I wonder if I can remove even more stuff you know this is actually part of the the browser does anyone know whether this whole thing can disappear no no one has a screen this small for a while <laughs> in terms of resolution yeah. <clears throat> I know you guys have like your know, 10 inch screens but even a 10 inch screen these days is 1080p <laughs> I don't have the eyesight to use it anymore. Yep. Like most modern phones are 1440 now. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's 1440p. Which is a little bit beyond you know, what we can actually perceive. Um, but if you're an octopus, you can actually see, the, you can still appreciate the improved <laughs> resolution. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think mantis shrimps are the same way too. I think those can, they can still see the higher resolution. I know 24 FPS is too low for cats to see the living image. Oh. <laughs> it's too slow, so that means you know they can they can see the refresh. Yeah. They see it frame by frame, it's like that. Okay. <clears throat> well, you know the gamers in this class, you know, can now you know, try to convince their parents to buy them a uh, a monitor with a much higher refresh rate. It's like I can actually see the frames one by one. <laughs> and how uh, how else am I going to be admitted to a four year university? <laughs> I'm going to be a pro gamer. That's actually what uh, one of my uh, acquaintances has a son, in a, and this is his plan. He wants to be a pro gamer, and that's how he's going to get into a uh, good university. <laughs> I mean, it works for some people, you know. Okay, so getting back to here. So what we'll do is we're going to re uh, replicate what the homework assignment has. The order is not that important. So I'm going to have your know, Q over here, okay, which is a set. Um, we have Q, and then we have all the L values. But there's one more thing that I need to track. I cannot remember what it was. We got Q. We got all the L values. E prime. That's it. Okay, so we got E prime to track. And then we have all the L values. So we got L of A. I'll reformat this whole thing so it's easier to read because right now I'm just typing in all this stuff. L of E, L of F, and nope, I don't even have that many. The homework assignment has more, but you know, this one only has five. And then what, what I'll do is I'm going to shrink these guys because you know they are a single number, so they don't need to take up that much space. Is that okay? Can people in the back kind of still see those columns? I know it's a little bit hard to see, but if I zoom in, I can. I guess I can zoom in just a little bit and still make it easy to read. But if I zoom in any more, I'm gonna. Yeah, I, I will lose the real estate. What yep. about hiding the menu bar on the um, the the window above to help Sam, you know, clear some space? This one? Yeah. Or is it always already hidden? Never mind. I think it's already or, cause hidden. Cause there might be the some tabs. other things I can oh, do. Right. Huh? Oh, never mind. It's the same. Yeah, so, okay. We can, can, we you can, can drag it off screen maybe a little, like a little above the screen, just to, so that the class can see on the bottom more. Mm. I do not understand what you mean. Like if you click and drag the window a little bit so that the um, bar is a little above the screen so that you can move the spreadsheet up a little. I'm not sure if that will work. That. Well, with the uh, the window above, the one that has the algorithm on it. Yeah. I don't know if that's possible to just drag it, drag the gr the the top window up a little. Drag the top window a little bit, yeah. like this part. Oh no, it resizes no. it. Never mind. Yeah, the w the the moment it touches the uh, the top of the entire screen, it will think that oh, you want to maximize. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, but I see what you mean. Yeah. I might be able to do it through here. Okay. Move. There we go. <laughs> yep, there we go. All right. Okay, well, because I need to click here, you know, it's going to switch the screen when I click, so I can't really you know, overlap this portion. 
okay, well, this is the best we can do. Fine. <clears throat> All right, so, so now we can actually start to trace the algorithm. Uh, the graph is this one, you know, uh, V, the vertex, I mean, the set of vertices is going to be a set of A, B, C, D, E. Those are the vertices. Um, you know, and D is hidden, you know, on the side here. Um, D is the distance function, okay? So, you know, that's really just saying, you know, the D value of B, A is 2, um, and so on. And then the next line, you know, states, you know, which ones are our start, uh, our destination vertices. Um, which one do you guys want to use as your destination? A, B, C is in kind of a loop, so it's kind of an interesting situation. E is something that uh, has no outgoing edges. So which one do you think you want to use as your destination? We can even have multiple, you know, destination vertices, which is fine. Hmm? Maybe C and E. Okay. So you said C, C is and like in between, e. and then okay. E has no outgoing vertices. Okay. Well, we'll pick C and E as our initial, as, uh, as our destinations. Okay. <clears throat> so it's not represented here, you know, in the trace because you know we are only using Q. But we already know that Q, the initial value of Q, is the is the same as the set of all the destinations. So we have C and E as our destinations initially. Yep. Go ahead. For the homework assignment, are you asking us to do this table for every possible destination? No. Um, I I added the destinations, you know, in the, in the class, um, and then I forgot to click save. So yeah. that's why you know, some of you did not see it saved. Yeah. But in the in another class, you know, somebody reminded me and go like, "Hey, you know, where's where are the destinations?" And go like, "I forgot to save it." <laughs> so I, I retyped it, and it should be there now. Okay. Yeah. I, I think it's C and E as well. I think I printed it too early, and I, I was like, "What are we supposed <laughs> to do?" <laughs> yep, that makes a good question. <laughs> okay, so E prime is initialized to an empty set. So all the initializations before the loop. You can consolidate all of those onto one single line. There's no reason why to separate you know, those into separate lines. Okay, so moving on, we are now initializing the L values of the individual vertices. The ones that are the destinations, C and E, would have zero as their initial values, and then all of the other ones would have infinity as their initial values because you know, we have not explored a single edge yet. So the most uh, the best we can do is to say we don't know, okay? You know, we don't know whether there is a, a shortest path, a, even a path between vertex A and one of the destinations. So that's why they're all initialized to infinity. Why is E zero? Um, because E is a, a, a destination as well. So every single destination vertex has the L value initialized to zero because it is, uh, it has the length of the shortest path from that vertex to a destina destination vertex is zero because it is a destination itself. Okay. Yep. okay, so the first line, you know, row two is representing the initialization. You can consolidate all the initializations onto one single line. Okay, that's cool. <clears throat> all right, I'm just putting this here so that we can maintain the header of each column, you know, as we scroll through the bottom. Okay. So now we are now into the while loop. Um, you don't have to track these things. You know, they are not represented you know, as a part of the trace. So the first line that we are going to do something is this line here. The first line that would actually leave a trail in the, in the trace is going to be this line. But that means we have to select a V from the set Q such that you know, the L value of that V, that ver particular vertex, is the minimum, has the minimum value of all the L values. Um, okay, Wh which one should I choose? I'm looking for a vertex in set Q um, such that it has the lowest or the smallest L value. Okay, first of all, which elements are in Q at this point? C and E. What is the L value of C? Zero. What is the L value of E? Zero. So I can pick either one, right? Because they're the same, I can pick either one. So let's say we pick E, okay? Just for some reason, I decide to pick E and not C. So that means the first update to the table is because of this line here in the algorithm. We are now removing vertex E from the set, okay? Which also means, you know, at this point, 
the only thing left in Q is the element C because element E is now removed. Is that okay? Now, if you want to add additional columns, you know, to help you track, you know, what the algorithm is doing, you're, you're free to do it. Okay, it's not a problem for me if you want to add additional columns. You can add additional columns all the way to the left, all the way to the right, but please try not to interleave <laughs> with the columns that I'm going to use because, you know, that makes it kind of hard to read your, you know, uh, submission. So it's up to you, you know, to decide, you know, how you want to do it. <coughs> So, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'm having trouble with the Q value. So, we, what you're saying is if you did have a path, it would just be all the paths included in that? So, like, if you, uh, if E did have uh, an edge to, say, A, it would be, like, E, A, C? Is that how that would go? Mm, no. The set Q is really just, um, okay, I, I see what you mean. Um, I call it the edge you know, bound is, okay, when I say edge set, it is actually the boundary. It is basically, you know, when we're expanding the portion of the graph that we're exploring, this is the edge of the exploration, but it's not the edge in the sense of a graph. I see. So I, I see the confusion okay. because I use the, the word edge again when it has a spe very specific meaning okay. in, uh, in graph theory. Yep, go ahead. Um, well, well, we'll see, you know, but remember, you know, the, the so-called edge set Q is not, is, let's call it boundary, so it's not edge. Would that work? Boundary? So in the notes, you have to substitute boundary for your, quote, edges. Yeah. Yeah. I think that might work a little bit better. So, you know, just for your, you know, tracking, you know, it <coughs> might be helpful to keep track of, you know, which one is our vertex V. So in this case, it is vertex E that is vertex V. We have selected, you know, E to be the variable V. Is that okay? Because this really helps us, you know, kind of track, you know, okay, what, are, what is the next thing that we're tracking? Yep. It's lowercase V, right? Sorry? Lowercase it is lowercase because lowercase. this one is lowercase. This V is this V here. That's why it's lowercase. It is not a set. It is a particular vertex. And before I forget, you know, I'm going to go to <coughs> my notes and change the wording just so that you know, we don't get confusion with that. Okay, so you know, it's right here. I, I know you guys cannot really visualize what we are seeing here. Okay, boundary. Okay, I think that's the only reference. Nope, here, we have another one. <coughs> that's a real edge. That's boundary. Okay. Ah. Okay, I messed up something here. Oh, this is something new, you know, but I'm not done with it yet. And it's missing a star. Okay. Okay. So I think we got it. Control R to release, to reload. There we go. So let's see. Is that better? Boundary vertices. The boundary of the exploration. <coughs> so if you remember, do you guys do remember the the maze? Um, insecticide and cockroaches. That's this is the edge of the expansion of the insecticide. So if you take you know like time lapse you know pictures, 
<laughs> and the insecticide is actually colored. You can actually see the edge, you know, spreading out. And that's the boundary that we are talking about. Okay. So getting back to what we need to do. All right. So we have picked vertex E to be the variable V in the algorithm. And we remove it from Q, which is good, okay? Because you know, now we have to say, okay, we don't have to re-expand this particular vertex because we're now doing it. So in here, um, in this particular for each loop, now we are looking for edges that end up at vertex E, okay? How many edges are ending up at vertex E, having E as the head of the edge? We got two, okay? So we have to look at each one individually, okay? So you might want to add yet another column <coughs> to keep track of you know, which E we are talking about. It doesn't take up much space, but it does take up a little bit more because an edge is represented by a two tuple. So which one do you want to explore first? AE or BE? It doesn't really matter. Pick one. AE. AE, okay, so let's pick AE. So when E is, okay, so A, E is, okay, this E, okay, I, I know there's a little bit of confusion here because this E is referring to the variable E in the algorithm. This E and this E here are referring to the vertex E in the graph. So I hope this is not causing any major confusion. Is that okay? All right, okay. So once we have picked Vert, uh, the edge AE as our variable E in the for each loop, then the next thing we have to do is to calculate <coughs> what is L of V. Now remember, variable V is vertex E, and it has a L value of zero at this point. Um, D of E, okay, so D of E is the distance of the edge E, which is, in this case, the, in the second E, E is a variable. This one, this E is a variable. And right now, the variable is the edge AE. The edge AE is from here to here. It has a distance of 6. 0 plus 6 is 6. OK. And according to the algorithm, we want to compare that to the L of W. And the W is basically um, the tail of the edge leading to vertex E in this case, which is A. Is that okay? What is L of A? The L value of A is infinity. So we are comparing 6 to infinity. Is 6 less than infinity? Okay, so we now move into the inside of the algorithm. So now we go to here. The first thing we do is we update the L value of vertex A in this case. So we go to vertex A and go, OK, we're going to update the L value of vertex A. It is now 6. In other words, we have found a quote unquote shortest path, the no shortest path at this point from vertex A to a destination <coughs> has 6 units. That's basically what we're doing, as opposed to the length of the quote unquote previous shortest path, which is non existent, and it has an L value of infinity. Yep. There is a path going to ACBE. Mm -hmm. Yep. Look at that, or are we not there yet? You mean uh, ACBE? A, yeah. Yep. It has the same length, though. Right. So I, I just mean, like, are we going to address that? Or yeah, we'll, we'll address that. There, yeah. yeah. In fact, if you, if you change this to a 3, do you want to change it to a 3 just so that we can see, hey, what happens if, if, if there's a, actually a shorter, a shorter path later on? Okay, the algorithm can fix that. It will actually you know, figure that out. Um, actually, I take it back. Because C is also a destination, so it won't even bother. Because we are looking for the shortest path to A destination. So, you know, it, you're, you're, in the, you're in the middle of a park, right? You need to go for the bathroom. So you're not gonna, you're not gonna be stubborn and say, I have to go to the one at the entrance, right? You're gonna say, which one is the closest? I'm going to that one. So the, the moment you find out, oh, there's a bathroom right next to you know, this, you know, uh, this particular thing here, then you're going to go to that bathroom. So that's why we're not, even if I change this to a three, it's not going to bother. Yep. <coughs> okay. 
So, but are we still okay with you know, uh, checking this six here? Yep. So are we trying to go from C to E, or are we just finding the shortest path to C or E from anywhere else? That is the second interpretation. So we are, we are trying to find the shortest path from every vertex to a destination. Now we did that to the destination vertices also, except they are already at the destination, and that's why they do not have a path to go to a destination, but they are already at the destination. Is that okay? All right, so that's a, that's a good question, just to clarify what we are trying to do here. Okay, so this is updated. Then the next thing we need to do is this kind of confusing here. Uh, all this confusing thing is trying to do is to say, if we already have edges stored in E prime that ends up at vertex E, we better remove all of those now. Because, because we just found a shorter way to do things. Is that okay? All right. I, I, I take it back, you know, if we find anything that goes to vertex A, not vertex E, okay, this is for vertex A, um, we have to remove all of those. But since E prime is now an empty set, there's nothing to remove. Yep, go Can ahead. Can you explain what W is? W is um, what we call a, a unbound variable. In other words, you know, you will basically find edges in E prime so that the tail of the arrow can be whatever, but the head of the arrow has to be variable U. And variable U, oh, okay, I see. I forgot to, yep, okay, I think I got it reversed. Because W is already known, we want to update everything that goes into W and not the other way around, okay. So we need W, so it needs to be UW and not WU. Okay, I see. This is, this is supposed to be reversed. You know, it's from U to W. Because W is already known. We know what W is. We chose W when we chose the edge. Is that okay? Okay, let me fix the notes first, and then we'll come back and continue with this, but that's, that was a good point. Okay, so where are we? Because we just found, okay, so first we just found, there we go. UW, UW, okay, because we just found a shorter path from W to a destination. So that part is <coughs> still true. Okay. Yep. Are you using V and U interchangeably? No, I'm not. Okay, let, let me let me fix this and then republish and then refresh the other the other page. And, I'm, and then I'm going to use a graph, use a graphical explanation to show that. Okay, so this is the algorithm. That's the spreadsheet. Okay, let's go here, refresh. Okay. All right, so the way to explain this, I'm going to keep this one here because it's, it's kind of important. Um, and then we'll see if I can, ah, that works. Because I can just change you know, this part here. And then I'll, I'll show you what each variable is. Yep, go ahead. Um, so w is what, essentially the tail that we're cycling through as we uh, look at the shortest destination. W so is the tail. Um, we're cycling through that as we check the shortest path, right? That, that variable changes because that's what so, we're Okay, so the idea is V is in Q originally, right? right. So basically Q and V just got its own L value updated to be a, a smaller value. But that potential will impact everyone who is going through V to a destination. So that's why we have to explore all the incoming edges that will lead to V, vertex V. And those are W, right? And the W's are leading to V. Gotcha. But if one of the W needs to be updated, 
that means you know um, whatever. Oh, actually, the original node is correct because whatever they go through originally to get to a shortest path is no longer the shortest path. Okay, I confused myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, so that it has to go back to the original. I actually, I actually got it right the first time. So, wu is actually correct, but I'm going to use a graph to explain that. That's because u is the new, is the updated. U was the old way. U was a through vertex in the old shortest path from w to a destination. <laughs> I think this will be clear once we go to a different path, like once we actually update. When we, we, yeah, yep, exactly. The, the graph that we have may not you know, necessitate that particular update. Okay, but getting to, you know, using the tablet, I'm going to uh, draw a picture. Um, <clears throat> I think my palm is not going to be an issue now because I, I turned it around. So all the hard wide you know, buttons, you know, the back and the uh, uh, Recent app, you know, button is on the left hand side, and since I'm right handed, you know, now my palm is not going to touch anything. Okay, <laughs> spoke too soon. <coughs> I touched the uh, all the way to the top, that's why. But on the on this edge here, oh, actually, okay, it picked up my, my palm again. Ah, okay, all right, so okay, this is this is what, what we have at this point. Um, I'm going to use red squares to represent all the destination vertices. So once again, you can have you know any number of destination vertices. It's not a problem. But we'll collectively look at these things as okay. This is where we want to be ended up at. Um, v is a particular vertex that has that, that that has just gotten its own L value updated. Okay. So L, the L value of V has just been updated, and that means you know, there's some kind of path from vertex V to one of the destination vertices. Okay? And we found, you know, oh, this is a shorter way. Update your L of V. But when you change L of V, then everybody who gets into V potentially needs to be updated. Not potentially, but they all probably will get updated. So we have all of these you know, potential vertices that are going into vertex V who, you know, whose L value was <coughs> just updated. Okay? So W is one of these. In other words, you know, the, for each loop here, the, these variable E's, these variable edges, are referring to these edges over here. So we look at each incoming edge to V and say, OK, you know, we are going to put this guy, do we need to update um, the L value of this guy? Do we need to update the, the, the L value of this guy? And so on. Now, they may not, be, they, they may not need to be updated because they may found, have found a path already that is the shortest path. Okay. So we look at each one of those. So you know, if you look at variable E, I know this is going to be very confusing because uh, I keep touching the, the top again. Um, so when you look at, okay, this, the green stuff is referring to, um, okay, I guess we don't need to do that. All of these variables on, in the, uh, on the tablet, they are all referring to variables in the algorithm, not the actual edges in this example or the vertices. Is that okay? All right, so when we look at E, variable E in the algorithm, in other words, we are looking at this particular E here, it's referring to a particular edge that is going in, you know, or have vertex V as a uh, head. So we are trying to find the tail. The tail of that edge, we call it W, which is this one here. <clears throat> is that okay? So I should probably make it more clear that you know this E is you know W V. Um, okay, that's since I'm here already. Let's make it more clear. Okay. 
That that makes it more clear. Okay. So assume E is, you know, W V. So that makes it clear that we have W. <coughs> So that makes it clear that we have W, V, you know, as an edge. Is that okay? Better? Okay, cool. All right. So the next thing we need to do is now to find out, okay, this is, so the key is this comparison. Do we need to update anything? The result of this comparison is important. Because what we're trying to do is to say there might be, an L value of W already. In other words, you know, there might be an existing L of W that is representing the length of the shortest path from vertex W to one of the destination vertices. Yep. Isn't that initialized as infinity? But throughout the updates, you know, they, they might have one particular value already. I mean, infinity is a particular value, so it, it, would, it would change regardless of if it was updated previously or not. We'll, we'll, we'll have an example that, you know, that makes it so that it will find a path first, but then it will find even a shorter path, okay? Okay, but the, but the theory is W may have a quote-unquote shortest path found already prior to the update of the L value of V, okay? So what we're trying to do is to say, okay, we, we have this thing here, okay, I'm just, you know, okay, I need to scroll this one. So this path is already found prior to this iteration of the loop, okay? But what we're trying to do is to say, well, since V, since V just got its value updated, maybe now when you add up the, 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 the distance of this edge plus the length all, all the way to here, maybe that sum is actually less than what we know was the length of the shortest path before. Is that okay? What if it is? Now, if it isn't, it's okay, okay? If L of W is still shorter than the distance of E plus the L value of V, then it's okay, well, don't touch it, okay? Just leave it alone, okay? It has got the shortest path already. The new path, even though it is a path, is not shorter than the other one, just forget it. But what if, you know, at this point, because of the new value of L of V, when you add the distance of E to the L value of V, now the sum is actually smaller, what, what do we do? Now we have to say, okay, so in this particular path, okay, I'm gonna do some erasing here. Okay, so in this particular path, um, the original path from W to, the shortest path from W to a destination may look like this. So it may have a vertex U it goes through a vertex U and the rest, you know, to uh, one of the destination cells. But now we are saying that this part is no good anymore. This path is no longer the shortest path. Shortest path. This is now the shortest path. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing the picture in the wrong way. So, where's that? There we go. Is that okay? So what we are trying to say, okay, let me use colors here. Okay. So what we are saying what we are saying is the green path here was discovered before. It has a length of the current L of W. Okay? The new path that we are considering in red is going through this particular edge and then going through this squiggly here. So what we are saying is, what if the green path, which was something that we discovered earlier, is longer than the path that we're considering at this point, which is the red path? What if the green path is longer? Then we have to update something. Is that okay? So when that happens, what we need to update are two things, not just one. <clears throat> the first thing we need to update is LW itself. So that's why we are changing LW, in this case, to the distance of E, which is this little segment here, plus L of V, 
which is representing this squiggly here. Is that okay? Because that is actually a shorter length. That's why we have to update it. And then the second thing we also have to update is to get rid of that W U edge from E prime. This edge right here was in E prime because it was one of the it was part of the shortest path. Is that making any sense? So that's why you know in the second thing we have to do is to go to E prime and say okay E prime you have to update yourself by subtracting the edge W U. Is that okay? And then the next thing we have to do is to re-add something to E prime, which is you know union with um, W V, because the red edge is what we want to add back to the set. So if I were to be consistent, this is the red edge, and this is the green edge. We're removing the green edge W U and then we are adding the red edge WB. Because the red edge is now a part of the solution, the green edge is no longer. Then what about the squiggly, the green squiggly stuff, which is here? We keep those. Because, you know, they are, because vertex U may not be impacted by this change at all. So we have to keep those. We cannot you know, erase you know, the other green stuff. We only remove one single green edge, but not the entire green path. Uh, okay, it's almost simultaneous. I'm trying to go this way. Yep. <coughs> so we're only removing W and U if it's in E prime. Exactly. Well, but but you can always perform this operation because the subtraction operation okay. means you know the the, this, the the result of a subtraction is whatever is in the first set, but not in the second set. So if W, U, if E prime is empty, it's okay. Just keep it empty. Not a problem. Yep. So is the green squiggly stuff and the red squiggly stuff related in any way? No. No. But no. they're both in E prime? <coughs> Sorry? They're both in E prime still? Yes. So, so you're correct. This green squiggly thing was still be in E prime. This red squiggly thing was still be in, in E prime if they exist in the first place. Right. So in our case, okay, in, in, in our current trace at this point, okay, so if I go back to, there's my trace right here, and. I, I think I get it. It's because they would have equivalent distances, right? Say that when, what has, what have equivalent distances? Is green and red squiggly stuff would have equivalent distances? No, they may yeah, not. Yeah. It, it's a summation kind of issue. Because you know the actual shortest path from W's perspective, okay? Because our focus is W at this point. So from W's perspective, the length of the green path is the distance of this edge plus the L value of U. The length of the red path is the distance of E plus the L value of V. So those, you know, how those, how you distribute the actual, you know, overall length between these things is entirely up to the graph itself. In, in other words, you know, in one case, you know, in, in the case of U, this edge can be a very small value, and this you know, whole thing can be a large value. And that may be the only path from U to one of the destinations. So you cannot touch that, you know, it, it, that part you cannot, you cannot change. On the other hand, over here, this can be updated, well, B can have an update from a large value to a very small value, okay? So, e, so this edge, even if it has a relatively large value, but if the summation of the distance of E plus L of V is, is still smaller than the alternative, you still have to do the update. So that's why the green squiggly line cannot be removed. Because you know, we don't know whether you know this change will impact that you know, in any way or not. Yep. So uh, this e, <coughs> e prime is assigned e union the set w v. Is it supposed to be a e prime or is it just e? Oh, e prime. You were correct. That's e prime. <coughs> Yep, that's supposed to be E prime. 
Is that okay? Okay, if anyone wants to make a you know quick buck, you know, being you know, quote unquote innovative, this is an idea. Make these electronic tablet stylus um, and have it coded so that I can have like four of these things. One actually physically is red, one is physically green, one is physically blue, and one is physically black. So I can just pick up the right pen and do it this way. That then I'll use the right color. The way common tablets have that. Yeah, but not the Samsung yet. <laughs> <laughs> the Samsung, actually, this is a semi-active you know, stylus, which means it is, it's actually electronic. It's not by capacitance. Um, but it's not powered, which is a nice feature because you don't have to recharge it. You don't have to change its battery. It is powered by its very small magnetic field that the tablet itself is emitting. So it's kind of cool that way. But it also means that it can be coded. In other words, you know, one stylus can be differentiated from another stylus potentially, because there's some kind of you know interaction going on between the devices. So, so there you go. You know, if you can find out how to do this and have an app to go along with it, you may not need to go to university. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, are we okay with this part here? Kind of. Because, yeah, go ahead. I'm still a little bit confused how two things can be unrelated and still be part of the solution. OK, so is let's try to construct. Is it because they're both still possible? It's still possible. It's just, we're not like solidified in the fact that they're in the solution, so they're just possibly in there? Is that the idea? OK, let's make, a, let's make a graph that actually makes this you know, kind of obvious. Okay. Okay? So we'll, ha we'll have a single destination um, vertex. Um, so we'll call this, you know, uh, destination is D, okay? Um, and then we'll make it so that you know, we, we have to update the shortest path, okay? The first one that we find is actually not the shortest, okay? So, so we'll need at least two ways to get to the destination, and we'll make one seem to be the obvious, you know, shortest path, and then later on we find out, oh, no, it's, you know, the other path is actually shorter for some of the vertices. So we'll make one one and the other one six. So now we have other vertices. You know, we have, um, okay, let's not use E because E is confusing. We'll skip to F and we'll use G over here. And this is six, okay. So there's no changing of F, you know, but something that used to go through F would I need to somehow make it you know, switch to use the other path. So let me. I think you need one more node. Hmm? I think you need one more node. Yeah. But not from 2D though. Mm -hmm. I need a few more nodes actually, more than, more than just one. Um, because I need two alternatives, you know, and it has to switch because of a discovery of an edge. Yeah, we'll, well, eventually it has to go to both of those because we are looking at alternative paths, paths. But the algorithm will favor, you know, F first, okay? So it, then it will expand everything from F. Oh, okay, got it. Okay, so we'll have an edge here that is 20. Um, and this is going to vertex, okay, C is fine. We can use vertex C. <clears throat> and then, you know, this edge, you know, has to be a smaller value, make it two. I think that would do it. That's, this is probably the minimum graph to show that particular aspect of the um, Dijkstra's algorithm. So when you look at this particular graph, okay, <coughs> and I'm just gonna, um, let me see how we can update, you know, show you how everything is represented here. Do you wanna do it in a trace or do you wanna kinda just hand do this whole thing? <coughs> I think a trace is probably better, you know, just because you know we can actually see it. Okay. So we'll we'll do it in a trace. We'll, we'll I'm gonna I'm gonna remove everything here. Okay. So let's go ahead and change all of this. And we don't have some of the vertices. We have L of C, L of F, G, L of D. Okay. 
Okay, there we go. Okay, so I'm, I'm switching to the other example here. I want to put a play, put it at a place where it does not interfere. There we go. So we're good. All right. So in this case, your Q is initialized to vertex D because that's our only destination. Um, e prime is still initialized to an empty set. Everything other than D has an infinity for its L value. So we have infinity, infinity, and infinity here. Is that okay? You know the initialization of this new you know graph. Okay. <coughs> Okay, so in the first iteration, um, we don't really have a choice. Okay, v, you know, vari variable v has to be d because that's the only element in the set q. So that means your know, q now becomes an empty set. Um, and then we have to look at the incoming edges to vertex d. Um, doesn't matter which way we go, okay, because we're going to look at both of those. So we'll say, okay, let's look at edge uh, gd first. Okay, edge gd has a cost of 6. Um, that's 6 plus the L value of D, which is 0. 6 plus 0 is 6. And we are comparing that 6 to L of G at this point. L of G at this point is infinity. 6 is less than infinity. Let's update it. So now this guy is 6. Is that OK? Um, and supposedly, we are supposed to remove you know, any um, edges going from G to anything else from E prime, but E prime is already an empty set. There's nothing to remove, so it is still an empty set after we quote unquote remove that edge. Is that okay? So far so good? But because G, vertex D, G just got its new value, new G value, so that means you know, we have to add vertex G into our set now. Into, into Q. The algorithm has to do, will do this. Um, see this part here? We're adding the vertex that we just found a shorter or a less smaller L value back into the set Q. Because Q is the boundary set, okay? It is the expanding boundary um, of vertexes that may be impacted by updates. Since we just updated mm -hmm. vertex G to have a new L value, we have to put it back into the boundary set so that we have to re-examine everything that goes into vertex G because they might be impacted as well. Why would um, E prime contain G and D, the edge G and D? Why? Huh? Why wouldn't E prime contain Oh, the yeah, edge? I forgot to add that too. Okay. Yeah, because the previous operation adds that. So we're going to put it here. So E prime now has the solution edge of GD. Just like that. Cool. Is that okay? But thanks for the reminder. Okay. So now we go back to the for each loop because there's one more edge that we have to look at. Remember, the for each loop is inside the while loop. So that means you know we have to look for all edges that will end up at vertex D. We looked at one, which is GD, but there's another one. FD, right? So now we have to go for the other edge, FD. <coughs> so FD is the E that we're examining. Um, so we look at FD and go like, okay, are we going to update the L value of F? But to answer that question, we have to look at the distance of the edge FD, which is 1. We add that 1 to the L value of D, which is 0. 1 plus 0 is 1. Then we ask the question, is 1 less than infinity? <coughs> because the L value of f at this point is infinity. 1 is less than infinity. OK, fine. Then we have to go through all of these things inside the conditional statement. First thing we do is to update the L value of f. So now f has a L value of 1, because 1 plus 0 is 1. Then we have to remove all the edges that start from F to some other edges? Well, there's none in our set at this point. So there's nothing actually removed. The empty set is still an empty set. Then we have to add the solution edge, which is FD, into the e into E prime. So the E prime is now the same. It, it has the element from before, but now it has also an additional element, which is FD. Is that OK? 
So we're slowly constructing the solution graph. The solution graph is now having FD as an edge and also GD as an edge. Is that okay? Okay, so press the enter key. Um, we also have to remember to add F to Q because of this statement here. So Q is now having G and also F. But since this is a set, I really don't care how I order these items inside the set. Doesn't really matter. Is that okay? So both G and F are now added to the boundary set because you know, they just got their OL values updated. So whatever is going into one of those you know, vertices potentially needs to be updated as well. And that's why we put those two into the set Q. <coughs> are we still doing okay? Okay. So now we go back to this for each loop and we ask, are there any other edges that we have not considered that end up at vertex D? Nope, we got both of them. So we get out of the for each loop. There's nothing after the for each loop, so we have to go back to the beginning of the while loop, which is right here. Is Q empty? Q is not empty, Q has got two elements, okay. So that means now we have to select a particular vertex so that the L value of that vertex is less than or equal to everybody else. So who has the smallest L value of the elements that are in Q? Q has two elements. It has G, and G has an L value of 6. Um, Q also has F. F has an L uh, value of 1. So we're going to have to pick F. So F becomes... Uh, variable F is now, you know, vertex F. V variable V is now vertex F. Okay, there we go. The first thing we do, you know, after we select it, is to remove it from the set. So the set now has G left on its own. And then we go through the for each loop. So now we look at vertex F and ask the question, what edges go into vertex F? There's only one. Okay, there's only one edge you know, going into vertex F, which is CF, the edge CF. So now we look at edge CF, and then we ask the question, should we update L of C or not because of that? Well, let's take a look. What is the current value of L of C? I know it's not showing in the spreadsheet because it, I scrolled up. You know. It's still infinity, very good. Um, and what is L of CF, uh, what, is, what is the sum of the distance of CF plus the L value of F? 21. Because the L value of F is known to be 1 at this point already, the edge the, or the distance of the edge of CF has a distance of 20. So 20 plus 1 is 21. 21 is not a very small number, but it's still less than infinity. So that means we have to go into the conditional statement again. So we go into the conditional statement. The first thing we do is we update the L value of C, so it's now 21. So we go to this column and say, okay, it is now 21 instead of infinity. Second thing we do is we, move, we remove all the edges in E prime that goes from C to some other vertices. Well, there's none because, you know, we have not, you know, remembered anything here yet. So there's nothing actually being done. Um, but the removal, you know, we still have to kind of put the same thing here because there's still an operation, even though the operation didn't do anything useful. Then we move on to this line here. We have to add this edge, CF, as a solution edge. So now, E prime is what it was before, but then we also have one more edge of CF here. Is that okay? And then we go to the next line, which is adding C to the set of Q. Okay, so Q is now C and G. Because it only had G before, we are now adding vertex C to the whole set. Are we still doing okay so far with this trace? Okay, cool. Um, then we are done. Yeah, we are done with the for loop because there are no other edges going into F. This is the only edge going to F. Okay, fine. 
So we get out of the for loop, we go back to the while loop. The while loop is asking, is Q empty? Nope, Q is not empty. So that means we have to select a vertex V from Q so that the L value of whatever vertex V we select is the least of all the L values. We got two here, one is C, one is G. C has an L value of 21, G has an L value of six. Which one should I pick? Vertex, vertex G, very good. Okay, so we pick vertex G as our next V. And the first thing we do is we remove it from set Q, okay, which is this line here. And then now we have to look at all the incoming edges to vertex G. This is vertex G. It only has one edge, you know, going into vertex G, which is CG. So E, E, edge E is now CG, the edge CG. Um, and then we have to go through this calculation. Okay, we have to compare, do this comparison here. What is the current L value of C? I know we just scrolled it off, but we just did the calculation. It's 21. And what is the summation of the distance of CG and the L value of G? It's eight. Because the L value of G is six at this point, the distance of the edge CG is two. Two plus six is eight. Is eight less than 21? Yes. Okay, so we have to go through that loop. To go through that conditional statement, excuse me. So we have to go through this conditional statement. And so the first thing we do is we update the L value of C, and we say, even though there is a path already from C through F to D with a length of 21, we just found a shorter way to do it. And that is why we're performing this update. Okay, so this update is significant because it explains all the stuff that we were trying to, I was trying to explain earlier. So L of C is now updated from 21 to 8 which is coming from this line. And then we move on to the next line, which basically says, okay, if we have any edges in E prime that start from C, we need to update those because we just found a shorter path. And when you look at E prime, ooh, we do have CF you know, as an edge to remove because you know, we're looking for anything that starts from C. So we are now up updating E prime so that it is GD and FD only. Then we add back the edge CG, okay? So it's a, it's, it's a two-step process because the first step is to remove the a, a current edge in the solution edges, and then the second step is to add it back, the one that is correct. Is that okay? So this part is really crucial because this illustrates you know, how Dijkstra's algorithm can sometimes quote unquote mistakenly find a path earlier, but then later on find a shorter path and it will be able to update everything and be able to handle it. Is that okay? Okay, all right. So we'll, we'll, we'll continue with this you know, uh, trace here. So we have just updated E prime and now it's time to update Q because C just got updated, okay? So we're gonna add C back to Q. But guess what? It's not gonna do anything that is visible because Q already has vertex C in it. So adding vertex C into Q is not visible because it is a set. You can only have up to one instance of any element. Is that okay? All right, cool. So that would be the last step inside the for each loop. The for each loop is now done because we are looking for all the edges going into G. There's only one, we're done. And then we go back to the while loop. Is Q empty? Nope, it's not empty, it's got one single element. Well, with one single element, I'm pretty sure this is what we're gonna choose as V, okay? Because that's the only one. Then we remove it from the set Q, which is this, which is, uh, this step over here. And now we ask, are there any incoming edges to C? Nope, so the for each loop has nothing to do whatsoever. And then we go back all the way to the while loop. Is Q empty? Q is in fact empty at this point. We're all done. So the solution graph is 
the same has all the same vertices, but it only has these particular edges. So when you okay, let me use a red line to highlight all the solution edges or the ones that made it to the solution edges. So GD is one. So GD is right here. Um, FD is here. And then CG is also a part of the solution. So when you look at the red portion of the graph, that is the solution. Yep. So you're making a tree based off of the shortest paths at the end of it because it didn't delete off the FD that you would think it would because that path is kind of like, it ended up being like 21 from the. From but the FD is still valid because FD is the only path from vertex F to vertex D. Because Dijkstra's algorithm does not need you to say, okay, I'm trying to go from this vertex to a destination. It finds the shortest path from every vertex to a destination, including F in this case. Yep. That's exactly the information I was missing. Oh, okay. The, the fact that the Dijkstra's algorithm, algorithm finds the shortest path from every vertex to a destination. Yeah. So okay. the solution set is, is the shortest path from everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I get it. Mm -hmm. that, that was... Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> yep. There's no start location, there's just the end location. It only needs to know the end or the destination locations, uh, destination vertices. It does not need to know where you start. It basically says, okay, give, tell me where the destinations are, and I'll tell you, you know, the shortest path from every vertex to a destination. So, which means the, the analogy I was using earlier is actually in, is not accurate. That you're in a park, you're looking for a bathroom. That's not accurate because you know what this is doing is it is is showing you exactly you know no matter where you are in the theme park, okay, it's giving you the shortest path to the closest bathroom. It's saying from the bathroom all the shortest paths to every person. Yep. Now, of course, it's not taking into consideration the queue, how many people are in, you know, waiting for each bathroom, which can be significant on certain days. I mean, essentially, the analogy is the bathrooms are looking for you. you Say that one more time. The analogy would be the bathrooms are looking for you. The bathrooms are looking for you. For all the people. It's the shortest path from the bathroom to yourself. And to each location in the, in the theme park. Right. From every bathroom, you're finding the path from there to yourself. Yep. Not necessarily the other way. Right. The, the, the exploration is going you know, from the destination back to each and every single vertex. Right. Even though the travel ports that. Which is really kind of cool because you know, it's, it's not giving you a single shortest path, but it's actually giving you the whole thing. So do we have any questions about... Uh, the Dijk, uh, about Dijkstra's algorithm. So this second example is actually better than the first one because it is it it forced it, it forced the update of the edge CF to CG. So it illustrated you know the the, the conditional statement and what we do in the conditional statement why it is necessary. Yep. So how would this Um, the red ones. Okay. How would you read that out of the solution set? Out of the solution set? Okay, so the solution is E prime, right? Okay, so if you remember a little bit earlier, um, G prime, which is the solution graph, has the same vertices, but only the edges in E prime, which is a subset of E, right? So the solution graph, if I were to actually draw that, is going to be vertex C to vertex G to vertex D, and then vertex F also goes to vertex D. That's my solution graph, which is a sub-portion of the original graph. And because of the way we update E prime, the solution graph is guaranteed to be a tree, or a forest, I should say. It's, it's a forest, which means it can contain multiple trees. But it cannot contain loops, it cannot have two outgoing edges from one single vertex, there are no alternative paths. Yeah. Yep. So to do it, it's fine. We have to get to D from G 
F and C. Mm -hmm. and basically just dis decide which ones are shorter. So from F, it's just F to D. From G, it's just G to D. And then from yep. C, it's G, uh, C to G to D. Correct. Yep. But you can also kind of imagine that if I do have you know the rest of the graph you know going into vertex C, and they they all have kind of like really short inexpensive you know vertices, um, they are all going to go to C and then you know through C go to G go to go to D. Yep. So for the homework, you want us to fill the table exactly like how you're doing it, basically. Yeah. Or exactly. Okay. Yep. So not just the answer, but you want to see step by step how we work exactly. Back. Okay. Yep. yep. Um, and column A and B, you know, you might want to add those columns to your solution, even though it is not required, because those two columns really help you keep track of which vertex is vertex V and which edge is ver is edge E as you go through the algorithm. So this way you can track things a little bit better. I guess sort of a follow up to that would be: yeah. um, is it is it okay to just um, make ours in a spreadsheet and submit that instead of doing it in, a, in the HTML editor? Yeah, that'd be you? fine. Okay. Yep. In fact, um, let me change the homework assignment to reflect that. Is, does anyone object to the use of a, of a spreadsheet instead of an HTML table? <laughs> I thought so. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so we'll. Ah, feels much better. Okay, so I'm going to change the submission. Has anyone submitted anything with this homework assignment? No? Okay. Because I think if I change the submission method, it may not let me do it if someone has already done it. Oh, okay. I can have actually two things. So you can either um, turn in an HTML table if you want to, or supply a link to a Google Sheet. Uh, don't turn in a you know, Excel spreadsheet. You know, just use Google Sheet. Is there any objection to using Google Sheets instead of uh, Excel? Because if anyone, sometimes you, you have no Wi-Fi or 4G connection, you may prefer you know, a file submission. But if you always have 4G or you know, Wi-Fi connection, you know, I think Google Sheets is a better way to do it. No objection? How about this? I'll give you guys all the options. <laughs> and then I'll make it clear here. <coughs> Your trays can be in the fall one of them. Yeah. Okay, your trays should be in one of the because you can always just download it from sheets if you have to use it on Excel for some reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. We're open make, off. But I'll make it clear. Yep. Yep, go ahead. So on this homework assignment we have two destinations, right? So yep. On the spreadsheet, you would do, I mean, first C, and then afterwards you would do E? Nope. It, it's, it's simultaneous. Okay. Because, you know, because the L value of C and E are both zeros, so the moment you add some other vertexes to it, it will force it to look, to, to use the other destination to expand. <coughs> and that's, this is also why it's called the breadth first search, because it is expanding the boundary based on the known distance from a destination to those cells, and it will always, ex it's, it's a greedy algorithm, it always expands the vertex in Q that has the shortest distance first, because it, it looks the most promising. Yep. Um, well, the spreadsheets that we use today, will those be available in the, in the shared drive? Oh, okay, I will make it available. Um, in fact, I'll do it before I leave here, because if I don't, I will forget. <laughs> uh, or HTML table. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna update. Oh, I can put it here. And example to tax. Yeah. Uh, okay. You guys can go ahead and leave. You know, I'm just gonna update all of these things first. 